both a mortgage and a security deed, also referred to as deed to secure debt, loan deed, or warranty deed to secure debt, can be used to secure a financing instrument for real estate loans. Most lenders in Georgia use a security deed because it involves the transfer of title to the property in order to secure the debt, whereas a mortgage only creates a lien on the property. A security deed minimizes the risk for lenders in the event of default, allows for non-judicial foreclosure, and speeds up recovery of the real estate collateral for their loans. Hypothecation and Title to Property When a security deed is used, it gives the lender legal title and it gives the borrower equitable title to the property with a right of redemption meaning the borrower can reacquire legal title to the property by paying off the loan. In addition, the borrower retains the right of possession and all rights of ownership, except those that interfere with the lender's legal title and any rights given up in the security deed. This concept is called hypothecation. The owner slash borrower hypothecates, seeming to own the property, but limited by the lender's rights. History of the Security Deed With a mortgage, the property is subject to other liens and or legal claims. As a way to reduce the risk to lenders, they started requiring a warrant deed from borrowers in the 1800s. In return, they gave borrowers a bond for title and agreed to reconvey the property when the loan was paid in full. Eventually, those two instruments combined into a single instrument known as a security deed. Georgia Code Georgia Code Section 441460 provides that the security deed is an absolute conveyance of title, but that the borrower has the right to have the property reconveyed upon repayment of the debt. The current act, however, does not require a reconveyance. Instead, upon satisfaction of the debt, the lender simply marks the original security deed as paid, and the public records are updated. Only if the original security deed is lost must the lender reconvey the property to the borrower by quitclaim deed. What is included in a security deed? A security deed is an absolute conveyance of title to land from borrower to lender that includes the following provisions. A statement that the deed secures an indebtedness. A power of attorney from the borrower to the lender authorizing foreclosure upon default. A statement that when the debt is paid, the lender will cancel the security deed or otherwise reconvey the property to the borrower and other provisions defining the rights and obligations of the parties. Who are the parties to a security deed? The two parties to any security deed are 1. Lender slash grantee has legal title without the right of possession nor obligations of ownership. 2. Borrower slash grantor retains the equitable title to the property and has the right of possession and redemption upon repayment in full. The borrower is liable for property taxes, lawsuits for personal injuries, such as an injury to a third party while that person is on the property, and all other usual obligations of ownership. Formal Requirements of a Security Deed for a security deed to be valid and recordable, it must contain the following provisions. An identification of the grantor and the grantee. Sufficient language conveying the property from the grantor to the grantee. A valid legal description of the property. Proper execution, signed by the owner of the property or another person under a valid power of attorney. Proper attestation, witnessing by an unofficial and an official witness, which allows the deed to be recorded. Note, lack of proper attestation will not affect the validity of the deed between the grantor 
and grantee. And an effective delivery, meaning the grantor must put the deed into the possession of the grantee or the grantee's agent with the intention that it shall pass title to the grantee, which usually occurs at closing. What are some common clauses in a security deed? While the FHA, VA, and FNMA slash FHLMC have created their own standardized versions of a security deed, a standardized security deed form for the general public does not exist. In fact, a complex security deed could be 50 pages long, while a simple one could be contained on a single page. There are, however, some common clauses in security deeds, including escrow for taxes and insurance. Because property taxes supersede most liens, including a lien created by a security deed, lenders typically require borrowers to maintain escrow accounts to protect the lender from the possibility of a tax lien for unpaid taxes. In addition to the principal and interest payment, the borrower pays one-twelfth of the property taxes every month to the lender, and the lender pays the taxes when they are due. A borrower may also be required to pay one-twelfth of the annual hazard insurance premium each month to protect the lender from uninsured losses. Usually, the value of improved property is the building and improvements. If a building is destroyed and there is no insurance, the lender will be able to foreclose on the land only, which will not satisfy the debt on foreclosure. To protect the lender, the lender pays the insurance using the escrow funds and purchases a policy that is payable to the lender in the event of a loss. This requirement is often waived if the borrower has significant equity in the property, typically a 20% down payment. Due on sale clause. This gives the lender the right to call the entire loan balance due upon the sale or ownership transfer of the property. This is a right that the lender may exercise or may choose to waive. Waiver of homestead. The borrower waives the right to claim the benefit of any homestead laws that would affect the rights of the lender to collect the debt. Non-recourse provision. Not typically included, this is a provision that is sometimes negotiated into a security deed that limits a lender's remedies to foreclosure. In other words, the lender cannot sue for a deficiency judgment after the foreclosure sale if the sale price is less than the balance due to the lender. Release provisions. If the security deed secures unimproved acreage, the borrower and lender may negotiate for the lender to release certain tracts of acreage as the loan is paid down. Most often used when a developer is the borrower who subsidizes and develops tracts that are purchased by buyers. The cash from these sales is then used to pay down the loan and release those tracts from the blanket security deed. Default There is no legal definition of default in real estate loan instruments, leaving the borrower and lender free to negotiate what acts will constitute a default. Residential real estate loan instruments for VA, FHA, and FNMA slash FHLMC loans, however, are standardized, leaving no room for negotiation. Failure to do anything promised in the real estate loan instruments will be a default on the part of the borrower. The Promissory Note A security deed requires an underlying debt for the deed to be valid. The evidence of a debt is usually a promissory note. Defined as a written instrument in which a borrower promises to pay a lender a sum of money under certain terms and conditions. Both the security deed and the promissory note are forms of contracts. What provisions are found in a promissory note? A promissory note contains the following provisions. Promise to pay. A promise by the borrower to repay the debt to the lender. 
amount. The principal amount of the loan stated in U.S. dollars or legal tender. Payee. The person or entity who will be receiving the payments. The original designated payee in the note can assign the right to collect the debt to a different party. It is this characteristic that makes the note a negotiable instrument. Payor. The person, persons, or entity liable for the repayment of the debt. Interest and payments. The annual rate of interest, the date when interest begins to accrue, and the amount and due dates of payments. Default, late fees, and acceleration. Default is usually defined as the failure to make the payments when due. Most notes provide that if the payer does not make the payments on time, the lender may charge late fees. Most notes also include an acceleration clause, making the entire amount of the note due upon default. Other agreements. The parties may agree to other provisions, such as attorney's fees if the lender is forced to sue to collect the debt. Recourse provisions. Based upon lender's rights, there are two kinds of promissory notes, recourse notes, and non-recourse notes. In a recourse note, the lender may look to either the promissory note or the security deed to satisfy the debt. That is, the lender may elect to sue the borrower on the note, which is a personal promise to repay the debt, or the lender may elect to foreclose on the security deed. In a non-recourse note, the lender's remedy is limited to foreclosing on the property under the security deed. Thus, if the foreclosure sale does not produce the total amount of the debt, the borrower in a non-recourse loan would not be liable for any deficiency resulting from the foreclosure. Prepayment. The borrower does not have a right of prepayment unless the loan documents provide for one. However, most residential loans allow prepayment. Prepayment rights are negotiated in commercial loans, with the lender frequently charging a prepayment penalty.